Had the ignition off, dummy. Smoke is bad. You fixed it, right? Where's my eyes? Well, I'm, I'm still I'm still worried about why water's not coming out of here. There is dripping out. Dripping out. Yeah, it should be coming out of a good street. I wonder if there's something clogged in there. Mommy, the lights on yet? Oh, is this what you're looking for? That's it. Where was that? Alright, so here's a piece of copper wire. Let's see if there's a like a mud dauber nest or something in there. Because I see a little bit of water trying to leak out here. I wonder if that line's just plugged. Now uh, it looks like there's a 90 degree fitting right in there. I'm not gonna be able to get to it that way. What's the, it's a turn right away. Still not working. All right, hold on. Stand aside, boys. Let's see if it's gonna restart. Choke. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe it would still be warm enough to start with the choke off. I don't think it should start without the choke at this point. Ow! Okay, now it won't start at all. Why? That's the million dollar question there, Aiden. Doesn't matter what throttle position I have in here. either. That's not good. 
Well, it, it could be what's called water infiltration. Water infiltration is when there's something wrong inside the motor that's allowing water from the cooling system to get into the combustion chambers. If that's going on, then that's really bad. So, now we'll take the spark plugs out and we'll see what they look like. You want to zoom it in? I was very low on fuel too. Maybe the maybe the gas actually is. Oh yeah, I'm practically out of gas. Well, I'm gonna pull a couple of a couple of spark plugs. All right, I'm just uh, gonna check the top four plugs. And they're wet, but they look like they're wet with fuel. I think that's fuel. All right, so I'm gonna mix up a fresh gallon of uh, fuel with the proper oil in it. Uh, this is the two-stroke oil formulation I like to use. This is Quicksilver Marine Lubricants. Um, premium two-cycle outboard oil. Uh, and then over here it tells you that this has the TC-W3 certified, which I'm not quite sure what that means, but basically it, it's guaranteeing that this is the, the proper lubricant for many outboards, and it's highly recommended on several website forums as being a good good grade of uh, premium oil. This is an old uh, Stabil fuel stabilizer, or no, Star, this is Startron fuel stabilizer container, and I saved this because it has, uh, it's kind of clear plastic, it's easy to read through and I can easily see the, uh, the numbers here so it makes it easy for me to figure out how, to, how much of this to decant to measure. So that's three ounces right there which according to the chart will give me one gallon of fuel at 50 to 1 which is the recommended mixture. So now we got to go get some fresh gas. Alright, I got topped off with uh, fresh fuel and uh, 50 to 1 mix. See if we can't get it to restart. There it goes.
that water gets hot pretty fast so yeah the water's actually steaming I can stick my hand in it so it's not boiling hot but it it gets pretty hot pretty fast so that volume of water I have in that pan is really not enough to run this for any length of time but I was able to uh, adjust the uh, carbs a little bit uh, so that adjustment is actually supposed to be made with the uh, boat in gear with a prop on it and everything in the water or in a test tank so that it's got some load on it so I'm just kind of doing a little preliminary uh, adjusting right now this is all gonna have to be redone again out on the water but I could do a couple other things like right now I want to see whether or not it'll restart hot uh, with the way it's set right now it should start right back up Okay, I'm gonna go grab the timing light. All right, Let's see if we can't use the timing light. Kind of hard to see it but it's actually at this first division right here which it looks like that's gonna be that looks like that's gonna be two degrees so it's at two degrees I can't really do the wide open throttle one like I want to because uh, uh, boy when you open up that throttle this whole engine really jerks on this stand it's a lot of torque we're dealing with there so, uh, so I am. Uh, I think I'm going to conclude the work at this point. Uh, so I think I've gone as far as I can uh, on this for now. I think now I can shift my focus to the gear case repair. I'm confident. I, I feel confident enough about the way this engine's starting and running um, that I think I, it's worth investing in repairing that cracked gear case. Um, the only Thing that still gives me pause at this point is I'm still not getting any water out of this telltale. I just don't understand. I'm actually, uh, you know what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to find a piece of wire that might be stiff enough, flexible enough to actually follow the line, but stiff enough to maybe uh, break through if there's anything stuck in that line. I don't know. Okay, there's a little dribble of water right here. Hey, here we go. Yeah, it was just clogging some gunk. And that water coming out is hot. <laughs> Could have been one of them mud dauber nests or something like that, you know. Some kind of insect probably went in there and left some dirt. Great. All right, that's one less thing I have to worry about. All right, so here's the lower gear case. Um, it's got a few little problems with it, but... Uh, the biggest problem, for those of you who haven't been with me from the beginning of this series, is that it's cracked. Uh, there's actually a crack that uh, runs from about here down to here and then goes this way and goes all the way over to like here to the rear. It also runs from here down to here, so it's kind of like a spider 
crack. Um, this slight discoloration you see in the paint more than likely is gear oil that came out through the crack. I think what happened with this is I think that there was an issue that allowed water to get into the gear case and there was enough water in there that in the winter time it froze and the pressure of the um, expansion from the freezing from the ice actually cracked the case. Now why there was that much water in there in the first place, that's that's another issue, you know, why how that happened. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out. So I'd like to weld this, I'd like to attempt to weld this, and my concern is that um, well, I'm pretty sure that if I try and weld this, the case will get so hot that I'm going to damage seals in here. And not only that, but, I mean, by rights, I really probably want to replace the seals in this thing anyways, because, again, maybe that's why the water got in there in the first place. So, that's going to be the next phase of this uh, outboard repair. So I'm going to move that down to the basement today so that I can start working on that at night. And uh, well, we'll go from there.